Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and to this side of the channel which is uh, the podcast Curious Business Talks. Today I'm joined by Tina which I met on a networking event and as soon as I heard bits of, of her story I was like I need to have her on the podcast and ask her some deeper questions. <laughs> Uh, so Tina, can you introduce yourself a little bit to our listeners? Uh, yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Tina. I'm a mom of a child and mom of a dog and soon to be a wife. Uh, I'm a problem manager at uh, Nexi Group, which is a pay tech company that runs in Europe. I'm a cyber psychology student, soon to be certified, and then I'm off to explore and run for a master's degree. If I'm certified, but I'm waiting for my result. So this mm-hmm. is when you get certified. <laughs> I, I'll see if my my professor is okay with uh, my my train of thoughts, and uh, mm-hmm. if I get good grades, then I will uh, go for the masters. Uh, but I need my results. Okay, okay, that's great. First question that I had in mind was to, exactly about your thesis and the topic that you chose. Like, can you tell us a little bit? about how you ended up uh, finding cyber psychology and what led you to cyber psychology in the first place? So uh, I was Google's ambassador for Croatia uh, for seven years mm-hmm. and uh, I was leading first uh, uh, GDG, Google Developer Group, and then I was leading Women Tech Makers and then I led them both and then I only led uh, Women Tech Makers. And um, so like a few years ago when the... AI bursted and ChatGPT Ch- came out and all that. I was like uh, thinking about uh, how much of an impact this is go- gonna have on society. And mm-hmm. I have, uh, I, I just gave birth to a little son and I was thinking about how that will impact his growing. And so I did a bit of research. Uh, is there such a thing that combines psychology and technology, but not only software, also hardware. And then I came across cyber psychology and I saw that uh, Stanford, Harvard, and uh, a lot of uh, universities had a cur- curriculum in that mm-hmm. that's like three or four years old, and it's a new new type of science. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I read a few books, and I decided that that's what I want to do. And then I left uh, Google and enrolled in the university uh, in Institute of uh, Dunleary for psychology, uh, cyber psychology. Wow, that's very interesting. And first, that uh, train of thought led you to uh, do some research, read the books, and then you found a place where you can actually get certified. <laughs> yeah, certified. Yeah, I was looking at, uh, okay, so Stanford and Harvard have it online, but it costs mm-hmm. like a bazillions. Mm-hmm. And Dalniri is also not the cheapest, mm-hmm. but it has like a really good cur- curriculum. And I saw where people from Dalniri are hired afterwards and how much they uh, learn so mm-hmm. I just uh, and they have an online course so I didn't have to go to Dublin because it's a Dublin university so that's why I chose uh, Don Lady. Amazing amazing I, I bet uh, lots of people will be uh, very curious to learn more about the topic and now that you mentioned all the universities more about uh, where they can sign up for this. How would you explain uh, cyber uh, psychology and and the use that you may uh, have like in the future with that degree? Wow uh, so <laughs> it's a uh, science that uh, researches how a technology different mm-hmm. sources of uh, all the base uh, all this technology is influencing people's brains and vice, vice versa how uh, people are influencing the technology development mm-hmm. uh, so since i've been in it for 10 years i always was curious about psychology besides that and i saw like that was like a, perf- a perfect match and also um i have a bachelor's degree in uh, design but i wasn't very happy about that so i want to have a master's degree in something that i'm really happy with with until the day i die okay <laughs> something that you're really want... really passionate about yeah yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah to get to know you a little bit like on a deeper level i put a question here like how would your three best friends would describe you and what they will t- tell you <laughs> tell us about you like if we ask like three of your closest friends <laughs> I actually asked my three of my closest friends, okay, nice. I have this question in my interview, so tell me. Okay, so uh, funny, intelligent, hardworking, and my sister replied later, uh, impatient. impatient. So that's the fourth. But because it's my sister and she knows me the best, I have to say that uh, also impatient. Uh, okay, great. That's like, yeah. a, I think, very common um, 
like a characteristic to have for uh, entrepreneurs like who have like this always um, flaming them to create something to do something like and we want it fast we want it today if possible there is no like delays and waiting for things to happen but we make it happen so I think a uh, funny describes you also quite well because yeah. I already uh, met you during that event and hardworking it comes with the IT and I think um you also mentioned uh, during that event that there is no faking in IT and that uh, quote really stuck with me and I mentioned you a couple of times in my stories. <laughs> Thank you. So, you know, no, of course, I, I, I give credit where it's due. And can you tell us a little bit about uh, that opinion of, opinion of yours, like there is no faking in IT and how people should get into IT if they decide to do that? Like, what is your best advice you know, on this? Like about no faking, it's pretty obvious because uh, you make stuff if it mm -hmm. doesn't work it doesn't work if it fails it fails if you are a bad tester uh your your customers will notice that <laughs> that th things pass mm -hmm. tests and it's in production but it doesn't work mm -hmm. if you're a bad developer you will i don't know like if the story has three points and you are really bad at i don't know front end you will drag it along for two weeks and it's expected in the it community in IT jobs that you can do it in a day or two because it's like a really uh, low story point mm -hmm. uh, so you can't fake it you people will see you uh, because you are not independent you're uh, dependent on your colleagues you're dependent on backend you're dependent on project managers on CTO on the customers so it's it, it, it doesn't make sense to fake it because you will not go far Mm -hmm. uh, during one of the other meetup that I was like in Pula last week, we were also talking about uh, starting freelancing and how uh, other people made the same mistake when they started freelancing over promising like stuff that they cannot deliver, like uh, even not knowing the knowledge to deliver these things, but they say that they're experts in certain technology or whatnot. And do you say that this is a very common uh, trait between like among men rather than women to say that they are good at something but uh, and figure out on the way yes yes yes, yes. Uh, there are many scientific researchers uh, that uh, can show you that uh, men have first of all there are many many more men in it than women uh, and uh, they uh, if they don't know something they will ask their friends mm -hmm. uh, women are basically especially in croatia trained to uh, be uh, modest mm -hmm. and, uh, because it's a pat patriarchic uh, society mm -hmm. and uh, I, I would say that men over promise and especially people I will not say men or women just mm -hmm. people who came from uh, univer uh, IT universities they mm -hmm. come out and they think they are full house of everything because their teachers told them so they graduated with with five with or a's depending mm -hmm. on the part of the world you're in when they come to the place of work actually mm -hmm. those are the hardest people to work with the hardest because they're super relaxed they're even more relaxed than people who have 20 years of experience so if you give them a, okay this ticket you need to do this 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 and this and they're like sure five days yeah. and like the seniors who did that for the last 20 years are like yeah I think we should make two stories from that and give it like 20 each mm -hmm. because they know how much work it is. They don't, they know how much things can go wrong. And the, uh, the kids from uh, colleges, they don't know what can go wrong. Mm -hmm. They don't have the experience, but they have cajones. <laughs> <laughs> how will I say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for real, for real. Uh, and, and that's different because people who are in tech for 10 or plus years, we don't have cajones. Exactly. <laughs> We're just surviving. <laughs> like, we want to automate as many things as possible and we want to make our, we want to work less and do the job, of course, but exactly. for something, some, for to automate it so we don't have to work a lot. Yeah, yeah. And, to... and that's the, that's the brains behind it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a great example. Since um, we talked about a little bit how people would describe you and what type of person you are, I'm also uh, very interested to learn about your child childhood and what type of kid you were growing up. And if you can tell us a little bit about your family and how they encouraged you to be not modest Croatian woman. 
<laughs> oh, I, I was raised modest. I was raised modest, and mm. uh, but but it didn't suit my personality. I mean, my father and mother would w were raising me like that, but that was the clash because I had my own personality which came out during pu well since early ch childhood and puberty, mm -hmm. and when I became. Uh, when I went to live alone and it was when I was 18 uh, then it started to blossom but then it was like oh but my dad taught me that I'm this but I'm this so it was reparenting myself mm -hmm. in my um, later years and uh, luckily for me my child my son is not the same kid uh, as was I because mm -hmm. I was always somewhere I was uh, really curious I was uh, not careful at all I broke stuff I broke myself a bazillion times and my son is not like that. He's more after his father and thank God for that. <laughs> um, so yeah, my my, uh, my child was, was really good, but um, we didn't level up until later years. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the parents' expectation and what was my true personality? Mm -hmm. uh, because they think uh, you should be in one company, you shouldn't expose yourself much, you should mm -hmm. be grateful if you even have a job, you should be mm -hmm. grateful if, if anything happens, you should just be grateful, grateful. But uh, this day of age, when you are working... Uh, I chose IT career. Why would I be grateful? I mean, if I know how to do stuff, my results will show it. I don't have to be great. I can be grateful for myself, but I don't mm -hmm. have to be grateful for my boss to get the results and to get, and he will get the money because of my results, right? Yeah, I will yeah. just get my monthly pay. So why mm -hmm. would I be grateful for him having more money because of, because that I and my colleagues know how to do the work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, my parents were not raised like, like that. So reparent yourself from time to time because uh, parents don't know everything yeah exactly and they also learn uh, on the on the way and what whatever they know best they just try to do their best and that best yes. seems different in different generations yes. do you, did you had any nicknames growing up like did they call you certain types of way because of that personality for me my mom used to call me and she still calls me like you're such a stubborn goat I cannot with you like whenever she tells me something I'm like always the opposite and we're always like this and she's like I cannot I cannot <laughs> yeah I mean everybody has that and uh, that's a good thing so you reparent yourself also during yes. the time of being a grown-up yes yes good, yeah. good for you <laughs> yeah. uh, people need to do that I, I have like so many friends that are that never did that or like even heard of a word reparenting mm -hmm. and I had a friend and he's like uh, 55 and he's struggling and we were talking uh, and I said the word reparenting he's like what <laughs> and he's like google like oh, oh my god this exists and i'm like yeah you can do yeah. it all the time and he's like oh. and he called me like later yes i read about it and i can do that i can do that and he's like, I'm like of course <laughs> of course of course who's stopping you i mean you don't need anybody to do that you can just read about it more and then the aha moments will come and you just need to think okay so my dad taught me not to do this, but I'm a grown up and I know mm -hmm. how to do this. Why wouldn't I do that? Mm -hmm. And it's it's super simple. Just really re, re, relearn yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, so my my, my uh, I had nicknames by friends because mm -hmm. my last name is uh, Fishich, mm -hmm. and they called me Fish. They still call me Fish, so it's always Fish. And uh, that's it. Uh, well, well, yeah. My 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 friends uh, when I started IT, they used to call me Geek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, that evaporated so I'm just still fish okay <laughs> that's interesting and also for the reparenting would you say um, it's important to have your own space solitude and environment to do that or can you do it while you are still at home living with your parents better to do it uh, to do it on your own because you can't do it while you're living with your parents i mean they will wash your clothes they will uh, uh fill in the dishwasher they will mm -hmm. cook they will throw the trash they will do the stuff for you but mm -hmm. if you are like really keen on repairing yourself go live alone and do your own laundry open your fridge and know that you're without eggs mm -hmm. you're without coffee or something like that you just yeah you need to work the work <laughs> you yes. can't just say sit here and think mm -hmm. you need to practice that and it's not going to be easy it's going to it is going to be hard but it's mm -hmm. going to be 
intoxicating and you will never get it get out of it it's it's life have you ever done also therapeutic journaling i'm just uh, interested have you heard about uh, that yeah yeah I, perhaps in my like early 20s mm -hmm. i did that for maybe a year but not, not now i'm 37 now now did you see any benefits of doing that type of journaling or yeah it was uh, it was good because i was living in uh, i had roommates back mm -hmm. then and that was my time alone and to put my own th thoughts into it and But it was, I don't know, it, it doesn't suit me now because I have other techniques. When I were younger and I, when you go to the kitchen, somebody's in the kitchen and mm -hmm. they're like your friends for six months and they're not, I mean, they are not your real friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are, but they are not. But uh, now when I have my own everything, I'm not into that. Mm -hmm. I, but... I have notes to remember to do stuff. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking about the therapeutic journaling, where it's like, I think 30 minute sessions where you just write about uh, a very intense experience in your life that uh, shaped you, scared you, or just uh, made you think a certain way, or maybe just in a deeper level hurt you. Have you ever done something like this? My friends did that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it doesn't suit me. I mean, I can uh, because uh, I'm a talkative person. Mm -hmm. I will talk to my husband about that, or to my sister, or to my best friends, mm -hmm. and I will uh, hear myself say that. And like my husband is my best friend, of course, and uh, it's therapeutic for me to say mm -hmm. it like that. Okay. And for some people that are not uh, that uh, extroverted, mm -hmm. uh, they are they feel better with pen, pen and paper. So it depends mm -hmm. on personality. Uh, for those of you who don't know about your work, which is also me, can you tell us a bit about your projects and what you are uh, mostly proud of and what did you learn? Oh, God, I had so many projects. Top three. I was <laughs> top, top three. Okay, yeah. well, Google and Women Tech Makers, I'm most proud of that because mm -hmm. there were so many uh, walls I had to break uh, and it lasted for so long and I had so many women come with real problems, no problems, Ew, just want to gossip problems. <laughs> really, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And I learned a lot from that and from them and uh, how to be more... Uh, how to read people better and to not waste my time and their mm -hmm, time mm -hmm. and how to pick your battles, how to pick their battles. You know what taught me a lot when I was younger, I didn't have a lot of money. I used to go uh, every summer. I used to go to the coast and waiter. Okay, that's yeah. how I earned extra income. And that taught me a lot. I don't think that's, I, I mean, it is a project because I went there every summer mm -hmm. at a different place. But that taught me a lot about myself just because I was alone there mm -hmm. and I had to work for idiots, uh, work uh, because people at the coast, they, it, it's just normal. They take people and they pay you a bit of money. You mm -hmm. sleep basically on the floor and mm -hmm. uh, you have to work 24-7. Uh, There is no break day. You work mm -hmm. three months constantly constantly, mm -hmm. constantly and but you learn a lot about yourself you and the best part is because you meet a lot of people from uh, different cultures from dip different parts of the world mm -hmm. and i met some awesome people that i'm still in contact with from like 15 years ago Amazing. and uh, that that taught me multiculti the third one i don't know if it's a project but like having a dog okay <laughs> yeah it counts <laughs> can, it, can it count yeah yeah Having a dog is the best. Like first of all, he's my uh, uh, he's he, he's he's a part of me. So he taught me to uh, not go to to change my lifestyle. I was mm -hmm. pretty wild, and I could I would go to the party, and I would come back three days later. Mm -hmm. But when you have a, a dog, you go home at three in the morning because you have to walk your dog at seven or eight, and you need to sleep a bit. Okay. Yeah, he changed my complete lifestyle. Okay, and uh, he he's a good teacher amazing well i never been to a party that last three days but well <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you need to go to un underground par parties they last they last uh not anymore Festivals. but probably later <laughs> because i love uh, so much research i was like searching uh, your name in google and i was like what else she did like what she talked about uh, online and there was one podcast show if you remember And uh, you were talking about non-work related topics and obsessing over research and reading uh, psychological articles. Uh, what are you currently reading? Nothing. 
Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. No, I have no time. I'm, I'm reading uh, microservices and services documentation for my work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yep, yep. Uh, I started a new, a new job three weeks ago and mm -hmm. I'm in training still. And it's pay tech. I never worked in pay tech. And mm -hmm. I'm working for Nordic region. And uh, I never worked for Nordic region before. Mm -hmm. And they have super different uh, types of technologies that is used than in, in any of my previous jobs. My mm -hmm. previous jobs would have like 50 microservices tops and they have thousands of them. My job is to be a detective. Mm -hmm. uh, I do a lot of research, root cause analysis, uh, system improvement uh, uh, proposals, but I need to know uh, uh, all the different terminology because the terminology is fixed mm -hmm. on Nexty Group, on, on Nordic uh, part of Nexty Group, and they have their own terminology. So um, I'm into that. Uh, I'm just learning this now. So Okay, that, it's fun. that counts also as a curious research, <laughs> but just <laughs> on a specific topic. You have a product of your own, Xamera. Is that the right pronunciation? Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us a little bit uh, about it and what it does? Uh, because so it's a product that, that my husband and I made. He has a lot of meetings and he has to turn his camera on at every meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I was when uh, I gave birth, uh, I had I was home for a year, and so my son and I would frequently be on the camera because it shows. Like, mm -hmm. he, he's sitting here and it shows all our main room. Uh, and he wanted to keep our family life private mm -hmm. not to be showing me like breastfeeding and walking my child or like uh, uh, helping him not to cry and stuff mm -hmm. so he came up with the idea that we make a privacy first camera uh, so if I was just sitting here and my husband would come mm -hmm. uh, screen would go blank and mm -hmm. uh, you wouldn't see him and mm -hmm. uh, besides that we really wanted the privacy to be first so we developed the, uh, the camera it's a native filter for a native camera filter for Max. If we are talking now on Zoom or mm -hmm. Teams or Slack or anything like that, yeah. the camera would be the front facing, uh, it's not filter, it's more of a layer. Mm -hmm. And it evaporates pixels before it comes to Zoom or Microsoft or uh, Google database. So none of those great mm -hmm. uh, big companies get our pixels and uh, the everything we don't have it now mm -hmm. uh, but everything is uh, we don't own pixels pixels either because we evaporate them mm -hmm. look at the uh, I was programming um, facial rec recognition algorithm mm -hmm. I was doing that for ages before and I didn't did, do that for like three or four years so I went back into it and it was super fun to do that and I was doing it for three months uh, but the biggest problem is uh, baby pictures because uh, you can't Pull the database database of mm -hmm. baby or children's pictures because mm -hmm. you would be labeled as a uh, pedo mm -hmm. <laughs> so it mm -hmm. was really hard to do that so we made a workaround on that and yeah so it functions now and uh, one more thing we made a, a recent uh, add-on mm -hmm. because my husband was uh, at a meeting and i was yelling some swear words <laughs> And uh, so we made a different thing. When, yeah. when, you, when you turn your face like this, yeah. so your face is a primary uh, user of the camera. When yeah. you turn your face like this, screen goes blank and the uh, um, uh, sound goes off. Oh. So you can't hear me swearing in the background or yelling anything because this is how you control it. Interesting, interesting, fascinating. That's amazing. And how was it working with your husband as a colleague? Like how how would that work for you? Because you're best friends, but working with your best friend can be quite tricky sometimes. I, I mean, it, it it was it was a project we are both passionate for mm -hmm. because now at, at my job I use camera a lot mm -hmm. and he uses it and we need this because mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to see my babysitter or my mom or my mm -hmm. kid like drooling or whatever yeah so the camera was something that we needed 
as a family. Mm -hmm. uh, but we both have our own jobs, so it's not that we are working and we never want to do that. We never want to have our own company. Mm -hmm. But I mic micromanage my cousin all the time, so this was uh, just... <laughs> extension. <laughs> extension, yes, yes. It wasn't that uh, that different from our daily lives. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's great. That's very really interesting to see behind the scenes of uh, such a project. You said, I think... Uh, you use this quote somewhere on your LinkedIn called without data you are just another person with an opinion how you since then uh, like how essential is data for you uh, right now is it still well, that important when you know the data when you know the research you don't have to argue with anybody because somebody who's way more smarter than us yes <laughs> took like 3,000 pupils from all over the world and made research uh, and did it on special kind of uh, scientific uh, processes. Mm -hmm. And they gave us a research. So uh, data just makes our life a lot easier because, uh, I mean, you of course you can fake the data, mm -hmm. but if something uh, passed, all the scientific reviews, mm -hmm. and uh, that is the, the, the colleagues, say yeah this is correct this is correct this is correct and you see somebody on the side who are like yo vaccination is bad for your health and there's like a bazillion researchers and a bazillion mm -hmm. scientific uh, people that say it's good for you because it uh, helps you not have i don't know like chicken pox or mm -hmm. like uh, cholera mm -hmm. <laughs> or like mm -hmm. some big diseases and there's mm -hmm. like the mindfulness uh, hippies saying no and you just have the research and because they don't have the research, they can be like, no, my somebody told me that something, something, something. And like, mm -hmm. like, so would you say that that's uh, the data and the research is most often your reason winning the arguments in your family? <laughs> my, my husband is like that also. So yeah. we, we don't argue around that. We send each other links. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 we are more like that. And uh, I mean, we are on the same page uh, about... Uh, most of the most of the things mm -hmm. he's more traditional than i am but we understand each other and we we cope with each other's uh, different opinions that's uh, great yeah but uh, if something is scientifically proven we don't discuss it because we both really believe in science okay you have a lot of experience as a different variations of manager you mentioned now you're a problem manager mm -hmm. Uh, can you tell us uh, what is the most rewarding and difficult part of being in this position? The most difficult part is working with other managers that are not really skilled at being managers or they don't have the empathy or they don't know how to listen. Mm -hmm. uh, I met a bazillion of them and I will meet a bazillion of them. And this is some people are just not emp empathic and they don't know how to listen. And I really hate that in people. And mm -hmm. it's no wonder that developers hate to talk to upper management. Uh, in my current job, I, I need to talk to developers, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. And I just need to in interrogate them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I see some colleagues that are like four or five years uh, uh, longer than me in the company. Their ego is like super huge and they don't let people finish their sentences. Oh. And uh, that's common. That's common because the managers are like that. You know, if you're like mm -hmm. seven year manager in the company and you, I don't know, drive a Ferrari and have like bazillion houses, why would you talk to some senior front end developer? Because they think that they will know what he was going to say. And most mm -hmm. of the managers are not from IT. They don't mm -hmm. know how to program. They don't know any single programming languages. They never wrote a single line of code. Exactly. Uh, I think that in IT, uh, those are the worst managers who don't know how to program. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't like working with them. And I encourage every single problem, or, uh, problem project or product manager. And I was mentoring them for years while I was working in Google. Mm -hmm. Learn how to write anything. You mm -hmm. use Python, use R, made a simple SQL request. Uh, just do, do, do something mm -hmm. just so you understand the scope. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's uh, and uh, eh, the rewarding part. Yes, that's what I wanted to ask. I, I have to, uh, to tell something good about it. Yeah. To uh, to have different management experience. Mm -hmm. This thing. Uh, I wouldn't like to be project manager ever again, because I'm sick and tired of it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a prop uh, product manager because there's a there's limits. 
Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I actually didn't want, I was not searching for, for a job because when I left my previous company, I was meaning to be six months alone and just work on Xamara. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it sells okay, so we have money, it's going okay. Yeah. But I, but I saw on LinkedIn problem manager and I never heard of a problem manager and I was like, mm -hmm. haha, problem manager. And then I read the description. I was like, yeah, I can do that. It seems like fun. And it's a pay tech company. It's a, it, it, it's a stable company that hires mm -hmm. a lot of people. And it's, and my bosses would be in Denmark. And I told told you on the meetup, I don't want to work for Croatians ever again. Yeah. <laughs> and I applied and I passed a bazillion of interviews and testing and all that. And I got a job. But I got an Everybody was like, how did you decide to go into this? Because it's called Problem Manager. Come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, by the way. Uh, it, yeah. it paid off in the end. And you say it's quite rewarding just because you get to learn, again, different yeah. things and so many things. That's it's good for that's, brain. It's yeah. Good for brain. I think you have like a fascination to trying new things and going straight into them, like cyber psychology, problem management. It's like uh, very oh interesting God. how you still have this sparking you to learn more in new things like that's great uh i think that people who work the same job uh, over the years mm -hmm. get dumber M maybe I, I will this would put this might be controversial but mm -hmm. if you don't try new things your brain gets accom accustomed to the same thing and it's exactly. uh, and it's scientifically proven that the, it goes into burnout or into depression or just not uh, life satisfaction is not good. Mm -hmm. It's bad for the brain to to do the same thing over and over again. I and agree. yeah, so uh, I encourage people to try different things because life would be boring. Can you imagine like every day to put like milk where the milk is supposed to be, yeah. coffee where it's not coffee? I, I, I would die. I would, yeah. I would literally just vanish. Uh, during that panel session that you had uh, during the GDD event, uh, you mentioned journalism. And can you tell us a little bit, how did you end up uh, going into journalism before switching to IT? So in, in high school, my best friend, who's going to be my maid of honor, mm -hmm. so uh, he was a journalist. He used to write for Modra Lasta. Modra Lasta was like this ancient uh, pu publication for kids. Mm -hmm. in uh, uh primary school and and primary school uh and he went on to be a journalist for the last 20 years 30 whatever uh and uh, for extra money uh mm -hmm. he brought me in to like go to uh fairs and like ask how much does this cost this cost and that's like one card and i would get like 50 kunas for that and that's like yeah mm -hmm. uh and then i liked it and because uh it suits my personality. Yeah. I went on and on doing that. And also because my father wanted me to inherit uh, his company, which he had back then. And I was a bully and a rebel and I didn't want to do design and uh, commercials and all that. So I mm -hmm. went into journalism and uh, so it continued. So it was uh, your way to say like, I'm not doing what you're telling me to do. I will do something different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, and I also thought it was really fun to talk to people a lot and to, to meet people. I mm -hmm. like people. You have some vol volunteering experience on your LinkedIn profile, but can you tell us what are you volunteering for right now and what are you passionate about? Well, well work with Google was volunteer volunteering. Uh, mm -hmm. We did get paid, but uh, for the record, it's vo volunteering. Mm hmm um and now i volunteer for homeless dogs uh but i mean i give them money mm -hmm. and i uh give them stuff that they need and stuff like that uh, but i'm really passionate about helping stray dogs mm, is there like a um some kind of campaign or a center or any shelter that you support specifically or all in zagreb or in area croatia like in croatia and a bit of in bosnia because Bo bosnia has this um uh, kill rule mm. if the dog is on the streets they have these uh, guys that pick them up and they kill them in all sorts of ways and it's really disgusting for me as a human being yeah. uh, so I uh, give money to Bihach uh, shelters mm -hmm. and I uh, give money to uh, Animadvor Animadvor is in um, uh, well, it's it's near the border with Bosnia, so mm -hmm. a lot of people who rescue dogs in from Bosnia, they just put them beside in, in Croatian 
territory and then this uh, lady picks them up Ivana Begovic mm -hmm. and um, I'm helping them out and my friends also do that so it's like a, a group activity <laughs> like uh, instead of going to brunches you just uh, gather together and do something nice for the dogs <laughs> yeah yeah we uh they I, mean, I I didn't have the time because I started the, the new job but mm -hmm. uh uh, they made a party uh, three weeks ago uh, for the dogs and they raised like 6,000 euros for, mm -hmm. for her and that's like like beyond everything and yeah. they're going to do it again and we are all helping and uh, supporting and sharing and inviting people to come over and uh, if you have something to give like a blanket or I gave Albert's old bed there and uh, mm -hmm. Albert is my res rescue dog and um, yeah, we, we do what we can, yeah. That's so lovely. I think one of the cultural uh, surprises uh, that I encountered here was that, that you don't have that many street dogs. I mean, of course, Zagreb is the capital. I haven't been to some remote places, but it is a ra rare uh, occasion to see a stray dog here in Croatia. And I think that's probably based on not only the law, but the people and their respect for animals and how they treat animals in general. So that's yeah. that's a really uh, great experience to have, like, amazing. <laughs> how many dogs do you have? One, two? <gasps> one <laughs> but uh we, we we bought a new place that is that's like huge and i'm telling my husband we can get another dog we can get another dog and he's like no tina no you're getting another dog <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. As soon, I, not as soon as we move there but it will be like oh my god i found him on the streets and uh yeah but we will get another dog of course yeah. Why not? It's the same. You have one, you have two. I mean, they both eat at the same time, go for walks for the, in the same time. Exactly, exactly. It's just uh, more cuddles for everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So and only benefits. Really... <laughs> yes, and they're really good for stress reliefs. Exactly, like, emotional supporters. How they call them? Yes, yes, they are. They are. Huh? I mean, when my son uh, gets awake at night, he now he's at the age where he starts to dream. Mm -hmm. and the uh, dreams are scary for them because they don't dream before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he gets this night terrors and he can't wake up and yeah i get out of the bed and i come to the living room and i pet my dog have a smoke and then i'm okay to chill with him because my husband is not like that so he's like oh yeah with him, but i first go to my dog for a little bit of waking up call and then i get back to the baby routine yeah that's a, that's a nice uh how to say a development of event to just first get to your safe space with the dog and then comfort everybody else yeah 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 but i'm lucky that my husband is like that i mean if he wasn't like that uh then i couldn't do that but i'm lucky that uh, he's well trained that's nice that's nice now uh for getting your first job was it difficult to get into it field can you tell us a little bit about how your previous experience helped you? I always have like two jobs or three things that I'm passionate about and I'm doing them. Mm -hmm. uh, so as I told you, my father had this company and he had a lot of clients. So when for, for Facebook came to Croatia like 2014, mm -hmm. 15, when it became a boom, uh, I was I knew design because I finished high school for graphic design and then I went to the college for design. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know, I knew how to make logotypes and uh, all sorts of st stuff. So I learned Facebook and mm -hmm. uh, his clients were like, oh, there's a thing called Facebook and I can have a free website. Uh, so I would make them logotypes. I would make them pages for their businesses. Mm -hmm. And that is how I earned the money. So, of course, when Facebook developed, I had to develop with the Facebook. And I learned about Facebook pixels, about data, about... Uh, tagging about boosting posts and all that and this is how i got into it through the di digital marketing mm -hmm. um, in that way so of course that is something i just did all along <laughs> and i i didn't even think about it i just did it uh, and that was like 100 kunas 200 kunas 300 kuna, kunas kunas uh, was a uh, ex valute for croatia before mm -hmm. euro yeah and yeah, that's how I earned extra money. So uh, when I was in uh, European Greens, I used to be a spokeswoman woman for Zagreb, also voluntarily, mm -hmm. because I believe in a green eco uh, ecologist. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the guy who was also with me, he had uh, a company that made robotics 3D prints. And he liked the way I worked when he was like, hey, can you help me boost my business with some digital uh, online stuff? And I uh, went to work for him and I learned how to do 3D models because uh, it's it's there. Why not? Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. uh, I did marketing for him. And uh, later on, I went to the IT companies and uh, I was interested in development and I was interested in AI. And uh, in the second company, I went from there. I had a mentor mm -hmm. who actually was like 60 years, like almost for retirement. Ooh, but he okay. used to work in London and he made his own machine learning models that formed into like legacy AI but he did it like 20 years ago mm -hmm. and he just and that was his little hobby on the side mm -hmm. and uh, he taught me how to do ML mm -hmm. and uh, Google made uh, I was with Google back then and Google made uh, because they, they knew what I was doing and I showed them a couple of things I was doing because I was using Google uh, uh, TensorFlow mm -hmm. to do so uh, and they made uh, a competition in uh, Warsaw mm -hmm. or is Krakow was somewhere in Poland mm -hmm. and they invited me uh, for that competition it was uh, AI for social good and it was a competition uh, that lasted for about three days and I won that competition and they mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were like yeah so you're the winner and your prize is you were gonna mentor uh ai startups that google choose to fund okay. but there was but i would mentor them for free uh -huh, uh -huh. and i was like no <laughs> i mean i had a full i had a full-time job i mm -hmm. had uh, women tech makers i had my own life and mm -hmm. they asked for i don't know four or six i can't remember four or six hours a week to mentor their startups oh, for free oh, okay and, and that I, was your I, price <laughs> Yes, yes, that's, it. that's Google. That's Google. Google is not what people think. Responsibility. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's gonna be great on your CV. Like, thank but, you. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, no, and they were like, oh, oh my God, you refuse. And I'm like, yeah, well, <laughs> yes. yeah. Uh, so then they gave me a scholarship for Google Cloud uh, Associate, mm -hmm. uh, and a trip to San Francisco, fully paid by Google, mm -hmm. and then I went there. Uh, and I mingled a bit with uh, Google GCP and Google Cloud platform and their people and in Google and in that center and that was fun but uh, I didn't actually see myself doing that for a long time mm. and uh, then I just roamed in uh, San Francisco Bay Area for two months and went back home and Starting re researching again and finding new things to uh, start, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah, because I uh, gave, uh, I quit my last job when I got that San Francisco offer. Mm -hmm. I quit my job mm -hmm. and went there. But then I was like, nah, this is not, this is not for me. I really hated San Francisco. I'm sorry if people from San Francisco yeah. are listening to this, but I really, really hated that uh, because of all the homeless people and stuff that's and the mentality and all that so i couldn't see myself living there i see and i returned to zagreb got a dog got a new job and yeah. now i'm here i have like two questions from these stories that stood out immediately uh, how important was that mentor for you during that time for Brutal. ml <laughs> brutally brutally he the, the uh he was one of the life-changing experiences that i had uh he was he really knew what he was talking about like mm -hmm. really knew uh and he used to <laughs> he used to make me uh write code on a piece of paper because he's old school yes, and yes. nobody does that you know and mm -hmm. uh he made me sketch how the ml would work and exactly. what would be his filters as if when blah 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 blah, blah. but on the piece of paper yeah. yeah, it's funny you say that we had the same thing in university and we were like baffled. Like, why would you make us code on paper? Like, we were like, it, this is crazy. But when I look back at it, making the ma matrix and everything on paper really made sense, like to think about coding and also to see the mistakes and uh, to prevent errors. Like, yeah, it it is really 
it seems stupid but actually it is quite a smart thing to do yeah yeah uh, because when you visualize it, it when you write it on the paper it's completely different but then when you write the code and when you see how it mm. works here you can debug yourself by crossing you know and it's, yeah it's, it's not that uh it's not that hard for the stomach when you cross the line it's really hard to oh my god where's the bug and you have to raise it and google it and da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. you can't google on the piece of paper i mean the, there is no google search on the piece of paper so that's yeah. that, that's a good way of studying yeah yeah and the other question was do you remember the the title of your project that won for social good what was the topic I can't talk about uh, everything because uh, it's under NDA. Of course, of course. You can uh, also mention can certain parts if you want, not everything, like whatever is allowed. The question was, mm. if you are in a boutique okay. and you are trying to help uh, a person find the perfect pair of pants, mm -hmm. what technologies would you use and how would you f help her find the perfect pair of pants or him, whatever? Okay, okay. And I mixed... Uh, I mix, uh, oh my God, Internet of Things mm -hmm. and an algorithm. Mm -hmm. I used them both to find a solution and I used sensors and oh. nobody did that. And that's actually won the competition. Okay. Okay. Innovation, basically. Yes. That's I mean, that, that, that does exist, mm -hmm. but I didn't, I mean, I know it now, but uh, I didn't know it back then. Yeah. So it was quite uh, interesting. Uh, do you remember your competitors uh, and what they did? Like they this... used software. They software. Used software no, completely. Software. They didn't mm. uh, mix technologies. They, they mm -hmm. didn't uh, use hardware to to do that. I think that one girl used a bit of hardware. She was close to me, mm -hmm. but she didn't use uh, the full body scale. Mm -hmm. She used um, a lower body scale. But in order to find the perfect pants, as it, it was, you need the whole body scale. Exactly. Too much the outfit. Stuff. Yes, yes. Yeah. And no, 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 to, to, to also actually... Also the height. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was just measuring uh, waist to down. Mm -hmm. But people also have bellies and not bellies, or they exactly. have breasts or not breasts, and... And it depends on where the the the, the end of trousers would be. Mm. So you need to know if it's a, a female person or a male person. But if you just me measure the lower part, you will not know female or male. If also, there are different types of pants, high waist, low waist, and whatnot. Yes. So it's a... yes. yeah, yeah, interesting, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, what are your plans career-wise? I adore my job now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, I would like to uh, be here until retirement. Okay. Currently, I don't know mm -hmm. if things will change. If um, I mean, it's a really big company, and the pay tech is evolving, and of course, it's going to be different stuff. Mm -hmm. But currently, I want to stay here until my retirement because I feel really great, and my colleagues are uh, really wise with uh, over ten. 20 years experience and it's good to work with people who are mm -hmm. uh, long uh, uh, who are here for as long uh, longer than I am mm -hmm. the tech is uh, it's amazing mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to learn it but uh, if I graduate if I get a master's in cyber psychology I would maybe in seven years try to do my own business as a counselor mm -hmm. okay Okay, that's that sounds interesting. Would you consider to uh, balance the two, still have the full time job and be counselor, or would you think that it's better to focus on one thing at a time? I I always have two jobs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and my kid will be older, so it's gonna be less 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 things that I have to do for him. I don't have mm -hmm. to carry him around or feed him or clothe him or anything like that. Exactly. Uh, I think I, I could do both. I mm -hmm. I think I can do both. Well, but from this perspective, I don't know in seven or ten years how things will evolve. But mm -hmm. from this uh, perspective, I I would love to do both. But uh, that that's only if I don't uh, if I stay in my current position. If I don't level up or down, it depends mm -hmm. on the company, of course. Mm -hmm. I see. But yeah, something with cyber psychology will definitely happen one way or the other. Do you also consider maybe uh, being a mentor for someone? No, not ever again. No, 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 uh, never. No, okay. no. I, I did that for three years and it's, 
it's rewarding and all that but uh i i, I wouldn't love to do that anymore because okay uh, i i passed that all that space stuff mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. i can use that time to i know color my nails <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm not into that anymore it, it, it was it was uh when i was mentoring it was a challenge for me to see if i if i even know the things i think i know <laughs> mm. But when I were mentoring Google senior developers, uh, because developers wanted to learn about management and how they can be, uh, how they can learn management skills so they can be tech leads, team leads, squad leads, or something like that. They need management skills. And a lot of them are introverts and they didn't know how to manage people and stuff like that. So learning them, that was great. Uh, that was really great. But uh, learning... Uh, teaching people uh, that are just entering the IT wor world, that's a lot of work. That's uh, that's like a whole lot of work. Like this is front end, this is back end, and It, you you would say someone who just starts in as a beginner, it's m much more difficult to mentor rather than someone who is already into the industry. yes, yes, Mm. yes, because they know how managers. uh because they have managers so Mm. they know how they are speaking they change they change like 10 20 managers Mm -hmm. and they know what's good how they want to behave what's bad how they don't want to behave but when you have like a green person that's only that's just entering the job they don't know anything. they don't know a single thing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. would you say the best way for uh, people who are just starting younger people because they're lost they also need guidance and uh, support uh, starting uh, in IT would you say practice is the best option passion projects what would you say is the best way for them to learn They need to find mentors. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mentor, mentors. I mean, mentors help me. I, I, I'm not. I wasn't an IT person. Mentors gave me this. I can just say thank you to all of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you need to have passion projects on the side. Uh, get a really good GitHub repository. It's hard for for juniors to get in the market now in Croatia. Like super hard. It's. Uh, it's it's hard for seniors to get a new job, Yeah. but for younger now it's it's a blockade. Mm -hmm. But there will be summer internships coming Mm -hmm. along Mm soon, -hmm. so maybe apply there. Uh, because so many people want to get in IT now, and Yeah. most of them want to do it because of money. Yes, yes, Most I of agree. them. Uh, I had a few friends like Tina. Can you mentor me to come into IT? Okay, so what's your passion? What do you like? I don't know. Can you tell me what to like? And Oh, all of no. them want to come in uh, in because of the money. And I never mentored those. Those are my friends. And I don't want to mentor them. Because it's a uh, it's wrong idea. I like, but do you like front and back end? What is interesting to you? Do you have any programs that you play with? Do you Exactly. read articles? Like, no. But it's a good money and you can work from home. Like, I don't Okay. want to. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's uh, that's really uh, important part uh, of uh, getting into IT. I think setting your uh, motivation and why you're getting into it. Also with freelancing, if you're also thinking that it's easy and you just want to uh, grab a cash, like, I don't know, make six figures in six months like every other freelancer on the internet, good luck. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure, sure. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that doesn't happen. I mean, th those are fake stories. I mean, if, if uh, my husband works for Switzerland, and Switzerland has the 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 highest pay in the world, but he's been doing this since he was thirteen, and he really loves to do that. Mm hmm Like mm hmm we were at the coast last week, and uh, we are lying on the uh, the sun is the the kid was sleeping, and mm we hmm had this little house. yeah We are lying on the sun and I'm like chilling and I'm like, oh my God, this is so nice. And he's like this, like seriously, like this on the sun. And he's like, I would rather write algorithms right now. I really want to go to, the, to my computer. I'm like, Marco, just chill. Can you just chill? And he's like, I really want to program. And, and he he honestly wants to be by computer and he wants to work on Xamara. Uh-huh, I see, But, I see. but he's that kind of a person. You can... Uh, the friends I was talking about that want to go to IT because money Mm hmm and remote work, mm they hmm would, wouldn't want to chill. They mm would want to chill. They don't think about work. They don't think about the bug because they Yeah. can't get that bug out of their head. So that's the difference. Uh, it's 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 up to per, uh, to a person. There are people who really want to get into IT because they're 
they really want to change something in the front end. They want to be a UX designer. They want to mm. make applications better. And they really think about it. But they they have their own projects. They have the passion projects you were talking about. Yeah, they are yeah. making stuff and they yeah. can show you stuff. Yeah. But those people who don't even read the articles and they're like, I want to be in IT, go away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, no, no. They will just waste their time. I, I promise you that they will waste your time. Exactly. I think it will come uh, to a point where they will also realize that this is not the way to go about it and they would just switch and change careers. But yeah. it's funny that you say that uh, he rather do something in front of the computer. I feel yeah. the same way when people ask me, let's go to a party. I'm like, I would rather edit the episode or research Webflow functionalities. I'm not like anymore up for these kind of things. I would rather do something much more interesting, like new drop uh, came along on another platform. I want to take that out and tinker with this or maybe change something on my portfolio. It's like, it's just completely different thing when you get like excitement within yourself, like that you want to do stuff, like especially with uh, IT. And I think yeah. um, that's the difference between uh, good professionals and professionals who are pretending to be professionals. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. And that's true. And you are a true IT personality. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. And that's, that's how we think. I mean, when I was programming the algorithm, uh, I, I was like putting my son to sleep and it's, it's like 10 in the evening and I'm mm -hmm. super tired, but I would come here and I would just, just one more, one more. And Marco was like, but you're falling asleep. I, said, I just need to wait. I don't know what the bug is. And and, and I would be like, ah, oh, devastated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, but that, that's it. Like people who don't really love that, they won't listen to YouTube tutorials. They won't mm -hmm. Google it. They won't, they won't think, uh, of, in, in layers they will just think of one thing if they can't find it right away they will mm -hmm. be asking people mm -hmm. and that is not how we work if you can't find it now you will you need to google more more mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. keywords, keywords. that that thing though, that you mentioned like i'm fascinated how many people are not wired to drill deeper to like ask multiple questions yes. to think critically about a problem and look it from different perspective mm -hmm. To leave something to simmer and come back to it and solve them solve the problem themselves. Like I'm always curious, like how you cannot uh, solve your own problem and you will charge somebody and solve their problems. Like how do you have the confidence to do that? Like how is yeah. this possible? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because fake it till you make it. Mm. But in IT, you can't. You can't. You can't. Yeah, we come back to yeah. that quote. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You can't fake it till you make it here. Yeah. How do you balance your work-life balance right now? And uh, do you have any um, advice for people in similar situation, like being a dog mom, an actual mom, and having like a full-time job? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep? Sleep. <laughs> uh, uh, like now it's uh, a bit harder because I'm uh, like, m my mind is in Nordic systems mm -hmm. and services and microservices. And I I need to go to the office. And I haven't been in the office person for like seven years now. Mm -hmm. And like when I started, uh, my colleague, Mattia, and he also got a job as a problem manager at the same time as I, as I did. So we we're like yeah. super close. And I was doing something and he came like, hey, Tina. And he touched me by my shoulder. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> personal space invasion. And I'm like, <laughs> and it took me some, because when you work from home, nobody touches you. And, but nobody, that's normal yeah. when you're in the office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, anyway, and I was like, and it really took me like 25 minutes of self talk. And he was talking something, but I was just listening to myself. Tina, you're in the office. This is normal people reaction. You need to be normal. Okay. Yeah. Stop <laughs> doing this. And my brain was like, Bzz. yeah. So, uh, balance. Mm. Uh, what's that? <laughs> what's that? Yeah. Uh, I, I go to sleep at nine lately. Mm. Mm -hmm. and I wake up at 6 30 and uh, I can't wait to because my kid sleeps until eight so yeah mm. I'm drinking coffee and exploring uh, yeah. but uh, balance is in my situation I will repeat this over and over again find a good partner to help you balance stuff uh, train your dog well uh, teach your child to play on its own if you can't do that, find support, find, I don't know, a babysitter if you have the money or, mm -hmm. but you need to micromanage the, the outer layer for you to live your dreams and create the lifestyle you want. You need to get, get a good partner. Like that's like the really mm -hmm. basic stuff. If you want to be a mom.
if you don't uh, if you want to be a mom and don't have a good partner just i don't know like be close to your parents or something mm -hmm. have a good support system yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's not it... easy it's really not easy the kids are sick all the time the dog needs to go out uh he needs to be played with he needs he needs his time mm -hmm. kids need mom mm -hmm. and you need to follow your dreams or your passions so think about it really good yeah i think it was i mentioned uh, her uh, one, once before i think kiki palmer she's like an uh, actress and entertainer she said i think that it takes a village to raise a kid so in this situation it would be really valid uh, to uh, get help especially at this period of time yes yeah it, it's not forever it's just momentarily because uh, of course life changes kids have mm -hmm. different needs when they grow up i mean my dog now has less needs when than when he was a puppy yeah. so of course but happy mom happy wife happy life exactly exactly yeah. if you can uh, choose a, a time to travel and to go anywhere like period or era where would you go and when i still don't know i, I was th that that was one question we, when we arranged this meeting you sent me that like a month ago mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this was one question i was like because when you think about it, it's not really safe to travel uh, anywhere in the past as a woman. This is like mm -hmm. the safest time for women in this planet. Yeah, logically yeah. speaking. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, like, what civilizations uh, would uh, were uh, where women could like walk down the street and not be harassed or respected? So maybe like the Viking era, because women were like the same as men back then. Mm -hmm. But then uh, there was a lot of killing, a lot of uh, stuff. But they, yes. they had cool tattoos and they... Nice hairstyles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe Viking era or Egyptian era, because women were also okay. But other eras, when you think about it, or when the fish first swam out of the ocean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe that. Okay, okay. So you can track the evolution and see what's happening. Yes, yes. Like Okay, okay. This would be great. Great. A uh, previous guest said the future, and I was like, what were you going to do there? <laughs> like, He was yeah. like, I want to see the flying cars. I want to see what, what will happen with technology. And I was like, okay, yeah, makes sense. But for me and everybody else that were on the podcast so far, we always think about the past. So yeah. It, yeah. it was a really interesting question, I and I keep asking it, so I'll keep it for the next one as well. Yeah, I, I don't want to see the future. I, I do not need the magic balls. Mm. Uh, do you have like a favorite dish that you eat on the regular or that you order? Gyoza. Gyoza, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm biggest fan. I'm, uh, uh, a few days ago, I found a, a culinary uh, um, course in mm -hmm. Zagreb where mm -hmm. you go and to learn how to make gyoza and I'm like Marco are you going with me I'm like yeah sure <laughs> so I'm gonna learn how to make my own gyoza so that's okay okay highlight yeah uh, I can't wait to see what for, will be the result after the course um, be the best. is there something on your bucket list right now that you want to achieve not this year but probably in the next five I want to get more tattoos <laughs> mm -hmm. okay <laughs> I want to go. Uh, I want to go to expand the eye. That's a, a couple that makes the best tattoos I, I ever I ever saw, and I want their tattoos. Mm, That's okay, that sounds like a, a plan. And uh, what would you like to be remembered for? I want to be remember, remembered for uh, like a good. Uh, female character in my son's life. I want him to respect women, to defend them. I want. Uh, I actually just want my son to remember me for my best. I don't care about anything else. I want to for him to be a decent person, to stand up uh, for the less privileged ones. Uh, to maybe sometimes he will always know how to get up. He has uh, really good parents, but I want him to do to help. The ones that are not so uh, in okay. in this situation. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That was a little bit sentimental answer, but a really good answer. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that that was the answer that I didn't expect, and it hit me <laughs> right in the 
the empathic woman heart and I was like oh my god <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> thanks so much for coming on the podcast and can you tell us where we can find you and learn from you and uh, yeah basically all the social media that you use right now thank you for mm -hmm. inviting me I'm sorry it took so long but it... no problem no problem it was <laughs> worth it <laughs> okay uh yeah I mean I'm on LinkedIn and uh for everybody else that's it <laughs> I don't mentor mm -hmm. uh in a few years, maybe if you follow me on LinkedIn, I will open uh, a cyber psychology uh, counseling for people and for businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, my goal is to explore uh, a computer me mediated communication or mm -hmm. CMC. This is going to be uh, my goal for the masters. And uh, also, I'm, I'm meaning to uh, do more studies on Balkan area because uh, there aren't a lot in the, the, the in cyber psychology there aren't basically any yeah so i connected to uh, to one scientist that, mm -hmm. uh, one scientist that i know who is also into technology and psychology and we are gonna do some really cool uh, programs together okay i will follow along the journey and i'm quite cool. curious to see what will happen thanks so much for your time and i hope you have an amazing non-working first of may <laughs> thank you thank you and, and you, for, you too nicoletta and hope see you probably yes yes that's what i wanted to say probably see you on another event Bye-bye. Cool. Yeah, bye. Have fun.